You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, I want to give you an overview of the project that we'll be building piece by piece during the rest of this training course. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I am assuming you've already completed the previous videos in this series. Before you start an HMI project, you probably have some kind of sketch in mind for the look and feel of the functions of the screens. This is a common layout here. You have a static header bar, a control panel on the left, a navigation bar on the bottom, and main screens that change as you navigate. This will probably work better with just a quick demonstration of a final working solution of this HMI project. Just so you see what I mean here, we're on a screen called Jog Zero. I'm going to go to Alarms, and you see the pieces that are static. You go to Recipes. We've got a screen called Setup and a screen called Auto. And as you go to these different screens, the, the controller here is reporting the mode that it's in on the control panel screen. Okay, I'll go through the expected operation of the control panel here. Besides the controller mode, we'd also have this Start button that appears if you're in production mode. We'll be able to stop the production, turn on the servos, reset the part counter here, you turn on the servos here, this will work. And the status shows that they're on, the position shows where they're at. The alarm will tell us if one of the servos has an alarm, and this position valid means all the servos have been homed or had the zero set here under jog zero. With jog zero, you should be able to choose an axis here with the tab and then hold down the, the button to jog the mode a little bit. Look at that motor, you can see it's moving. You got the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. There's the z-axis, and you can set the speed, XLD cell, that kind of thing. And like for the z-axis here, I could set zero. Right now it's at 374. I hit set zero, and that becomes the new zero position. Notice the jog zero is considered manual mode, and therefore we cannot start production. The button's not even there. If you want to start production, you'd have to be in the auto screen. Maybe I'll do here three cycles so you can see what's supposed to happen from the controller side. Three cycles to go, three remaining, zero complete. I'll hit start. See, we're moving back to zero. And the sequence begins to move here, doing some animation at uh, this part of the motion. From the motion control point of view, this is what's happening. There's that zero move of all axes at the same time, moving to absolute position zero. There's this delay, and then the axes move one by one with a, the same delay and repeat for a number of cycles. And those are the input parameters to the machine that we see here. Another part of production mode will be the recipes screen. And what you can do with the recipes is to save certain sets of data from the HMI. For example, I've saved this set called fast, change all of the input parameters and activate those. Now back on the auto screen, you can see those have been applied. And now with this new data from the recipe, I can reset the remaining cycles and hit start again. And you see that the motors are moving at a different speed according to what I've put in here. A quick demo here of the setup screen. This setup screen will tell the controller to write parameters into the servos. For example, I could do that on the Z axis and it'll work if the servos are off. Of course, then a reboot's required. The controller is reporting that here. And when that happens, I can't turn the servos on anymore. You see the status won't turn on anymore. But I can uh, do a reboot request here, tell the controller to reboot itself, and just wait a little bit for that to take place. There we go. The controller is now rebooted itself and uh, ready to move on here. The other side of this, you can exit the HMI project back to the Windows CE environment. There's a report of the HMI's IP address. In this case, that'll just be the IP address of the CKMEA network connection that you're using, and the MPIC IP address given right here. Down here, there's the alarm testing area. You can clear an alarm, but uh, more importantly, for testing purposes, you can set a low position error such that you will be able to easily produce an alarm from your remote location. So now, for example, I could go to the jog zero screen for the Z axis, turn the servos all on, 
and attempt to jog this Z motor. And you see I've got an alarm, AD0. The alarms page will report the alarm device, the axis, and the text for that alarm code with the time. And you can acknowledge the alarm here and reset and you get back to normal operation. The last feature I'll demonstrate real quick is the log on and log off. Now off screen I enabled this, but I've got the setup button now such that you can't use it unless you log in. I can log in with the username and password that I know. Now you see that username and I'm able to get to the setup screen again. But if I were to log off, even though I'm still on this screen here, I've got these buttons set for a different password level. I'd have to log in again in order to use anything on this screen. And we call that user management. I hope that helps you understand where we're going in this training class. Our job is not to program the controller, of course, but just to create the HMI for the pre-existing controller program. You are encouraged to customize the HMI to your liking with any uh, colors or uh, object styles or graphics that you'd like to add to it to make it your own. Have some fun with it. Um, and you're also welcome to add any additional functionality. For certification purposes, the most important thing is just that your HMI functions in the same way. The rest of the videos and mini labs in this training course will walk you through the steps required to build this HMI. So I hope you see the direction that we're taking in this training course. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI editor.